Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes. Today I'll be handing over the Chasson 640 SE. This is the SE model, but they do come in a titanium VIP and titanium premium, and they all have the same wordings. To start now, I'll walk around on the outside of the vehicle. If you come to the driver's door, you'll find your tyre pressure just located here. And then coming out the motorhome body, you've got your LPG, so this is liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker where you can fit one six kilogram propane bottle. All your lockers open with a little key there, so you just turn to unlock, there's an unlock at the top, and so when it's flat from the bottom of the vehicle to the top, it's open. When it's across from front to back, it's locked. You can open it up, and in there you'll see there's one six kilogram gas bottle on there. Once it's in, always drop the bottle into place. Turn it off when you're driving and obviously when you're on site, you turn it back on. And to do so, you turn on and off at the top here. And then to connect the pigtail to the gas bottle, you'll need, it's a left-hand thread, so opposite threads with it being gas, you'll need a, an adjustable wrench or gas spanner and just nip it up there. And then you'll also notice in here, you've got your 25 meter hookup bleed which comes with the vehicle. And does this as a, You've got a Ford, you've got your Tornai. Coming on this side, you've got your awning there, with your awning light, and your two fridge vents. And then located just underneath here, the back wheel on the driver's side is your waist. So you pull this open, and this is just the water we've tested the vehicle with. So you drive over a grid and you open that and deposit the water. And obviously in the winter it's very important that you shut this as well. Or should, or should I say open it. External gas point. So you own, only get the gas point on the SE and the titanium premium. This is a gas point, you get a gas spigot, push it up there and then turn the gas on and this will run from the bottle on board. You will need some Jubilee clips to connect the spigot to the gas hosing and the hose to either your Kadak or external barbecue on the other side. WC is your toilet, so again all the keys, little key opens all of this. And then you will just make sure the blades close on the bottom ball of the toilet from inside otherwise it won't come out the handle up and slide it out. Got some wheels there so you can drag it when it's full as it can be heavy. And then empty you've got your waste disposal point which is normally behind the toilet block or beside it. Open the spout by removing the grey cap. On the back of it if you just press the orange button and tip out. Once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a rinse and tip out again. And then if you're using the tablet form, you would put it back in with a pint of water and drop the tablet down the toilet. And if you're using the old form, which is the liquid, fill this up with liquid and tip into here. And then it's good to be used. Come to the, the back of the vehicle, so you've got your garage on either side. So again, you'd open this up. And in here, you've got your two infill cushions for your front lounge to make a double bed which I'll show you from inside you've got your carpets and you've got your silver screens as well so there is car blinds on this one but these are to go on outside so if in the, in the winter it's very cold you can put them around the, the outside of the van clip them around the mirrors there and keep the heat in or if it's hot you can reflect the heat from making the windscreen hot You've got a light here which will work when the power's on from inside and you do have, it is heated by the diesel heating just down here and you've got a 12 volt and 230 plug. You've got these little tethering points down here as well in the corners to tie down your load and as you can see there's your light on now. And again a little hatch so if you want to get something from the inside of the the garage from inside the vehicle you would just open that hatch without getting out should it be raining or if you want to keep use this as a to keep your pets in you can do that as well coming around the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and rear view camera just underneath 
you put your two balls here for which takes a bike rack this is where the body has been strengthened and then should you want parking sensors fitted you can have them fitted to these little dots here and they'll give it that factory look on the other side again access to the garage but you do have drop down shelves at the top there for your hookah bleeds and your toilet chemicals and your bits and pieces up there and then coming round so this is this locker is called your Technibox locker. So just push them both in. And the Technibox has all your water in and your electrics in. So I'll talk about your water first. So your little spout here, and this is where you get a hose pipe. So go and buy yourself a hose pipe that you've never used in the garden. Some people say it's got to be food graded, others don't. I'm not too fussed about that. Just get a hose pipe. Get some um, ends, you'll need the hose lock end and the screw on end to the tap because it's just a brass tap. Put your hose into there and fill it until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see from the main control panel on board the vehicle. And obviously you can have a rough idea how much water is in there from looking at the tank. Once it's empty and you want to clean it out you can remove this cap and clean it out once a season. But see you've got a full tank of water and you're ready to start travelling. Obviously if you're wild camping you will have to take a full tank of water with you but if you're going to a site then you tend to not want to travel with much water. You, 20, you tend to only want to travel with 20 litres of water at the maximum so you can stop and use the toilet or have a cup of tea. So to drain it from a full tank to 20 litres you'd lift this little handle here. You'd go in and you'd put, and it'll drain off directly underneath the, the van. You'd go in, you'd put the power on, put the pump on and open the tap and that'll drain from a full tank to 20 litres. But to get it from a full tank to empty or get that remaining 20 litres out, if you go underneath the vehicle, just up here, just there, there is a 15mm compression push fit on there and you'll just pull that off and that'll drain the full tank or the remaining 20 litres out. You'll do that in the winter time. Coming over this side, you do have all your electrics. So you've got your 240 trips your two fuses for the diesel heater so if the diesel heater were bust or green light goes to a flashing green light what you do is you would then remove these obviously turn the heater off remove these put them back in and it'll reset the heater but you do have to have a quarter of a tank of diesel or more for the heater to work and then you've got your various 12 volt fuses for the lights and pump and various appliances in the vehicle so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses and then next to it you do have your mains connectivity point so to hook the vehicle up get your hookah bleed you do get a 25 meter hookah bleed you'd lift the collar on it and then slide it on like so always hook the vehicle up first and then go to your power source and then to unhook there's just a little small blue lever there which you push down and pull the obviously unhook the side first and then do the van last And then on here, so on the front there, this cover has to come off. So your water heater is behind here, so this cover has to come off when heating the water on gas. If you're heating it on electric, it can stay on, but if you're heating it on gas, you have to take it off because it's like a flue to allow the fumes out. So you just pinch it, lift it off, and obviously the fumes will come out. If you've left the cover on, it will get, you will get a red light from inside the vehicle, either say one or two things, you've run out of gas or the cover's been left on. Come out, take the cover off, take the cover out and just blow into here. It removes any um, build up of gas and it will allow it to light again. And then you do have your cold water external shower feed where you'd have to put the pump on from inside to allow the shower to work. Coming to the passenger door, so if you open the cab door, you can then open your fuel filler point and below you've got your AdBlue. So with Ford it's capless, so you just push your diesel filler in there and fill until it was full. And then because it's a Euro 6 compliant engine, it's got the AdBlue solution. It will give you a mileage countdown when it needs it, but as soon as the mileage countdown does come on, it's best to top it up because if you allow it to go too low or you allow it to go completely completely empty the vehicle won't start and if it goes too low the vehicle can go into limp mode to try and protect the engine so just do top that up and get it in at most service stations on the pump now 
we can buy it in the drums and just fill it up but what i'd do is because you've got a good size garage on this i'd buy a 10 litre drum and just keep it on board just in case that does come on and you're stuck out um somewhere far out you can just top that up and then to open the bonnet on a forge you've got to use the key so you put the key in you turn it to the left which pops the bonnet and then to the right which is which will then release the bonnet and you've got your various fluids in here so you've got your brake fluid oil screen wash which is the main one you're going to need this side you've got your coolant and then for jumping you would lift here and this is your positive and then you'd earth off the side of your engine hoist which is just down here your loop for your your negative and then on the front you've got your weight plate so it's got your Ford chassis number on and then it's got your gross vehicle weight three and a half ton train weight three and a half ton your train weight this vehicle can tow as the automatics can only tow 750 but the manuals can tow a lot more however you do need to buy the tow bar through Chass your chasson dealer so you would have to buy it through us um we'd contact chasson and buy the tow bar through trigono services they'll then send a new plate out and they'll change your tone weight on your certificate of conformity which is your which will then go on your logbook but at present you can't tow anything you do have your ho number there so that's your build number of the vehicle for when you want in a warranty claim out any parts for the vehicle so now inside the vehicle this is your main control panel so your on off switch is here this will either give you a 12 volt if you're not hooked up and if you are hooked up you'll have 240 which works the three pin plugs within the vehicle and it'll indicate here when you are hooked up next week you've got your lights so this is a master switch for all your lights and then they all are individually switched around the vehicle You've got your pump, so just do make sure you've got enough water in there before you put your pump on or there is a chance that you could burn the pump out. You've got your awning light and then these here correspond with these buttons at the bottom. So first of all you've got the one of the trailer which is your leisure battery reading fully charged. One of the truck which is your engine battery reading. Water. So this is your fresh water, half a tank, and when this goes red, it indicates it's empty, or when it goes further down to here, it indicates that the waste is full. And then you can press this button to dim or brighten the panel. So whoever's in the drop down bed, if it's too bright, you can dim it down on a night, or if you struggle to see it, you can brighten it up. Next week, you've got your diesel with Basto heating. So always make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main engine tank and then you would just turn on always turn it on to full give it five minutes then you can adjust the temperature if the lights do start fl flickering this isn't an issue this is normal as it's taken a high voltage off the battery to power this and start it up but after five minutes the light should go back to normal then you've got lights here for your mirror and your little blue night lights on your steps there. This one also does your kitchen lights as well. So now we're in the kitchen area. You do have two gas rings. Which light like so. But once you've used these, do allow them to cool down before you put the glass lid down. And then you do have your electric hot plate which is operated by this side and the red light. Obviously you do make sure that you don't knock this when you're in the vehicle and then hook it up as you won't physically know it's on and it could smash the glass. But that red light does indicate when the hot plate is on. And then here you do have your oven and above you've got your grill there. So when you've got your oven shelf and grill pan in, you might want to remove it or you might want to take it out or wrap it up in a tea towel, stop it rattling when on the road. But especially with the oven shelf, is it, if, when putting it back in, if you make sure this loop is at the back 
as it's designed to stop the burner of the jet for the oven being blocked. You've got storage in this side and the fire extinguisher. Storage drawer. Storage beside the oven and then your cutlery drawer. So they all lock by pushing the catches in like so. Two USBs for charging. The electric drop down table switch which I'll get onto in a minute and the electric drop down bed which I'll get on to in a minute. And then you do have your three pin socket. You may want to remove this cover and slightly turn this round so instead of being straight it could be so this plug is on its side as most plugs have that little bit on the bottom the little tab that which will then stop this door from opening so if you turn that slightly you can then get in your cutlery drawer without unplugging your kettle or your toaster storage cabinets above but in this one it's, it's very important as you've got your two switches so you've got Truma boiler this one and Truma boiler EL. EL stands for electric, this is gas, so this is where the cover needs to come off the outside of the vehicle. You've got 50 degrees at the top of heating your water, off in the middle, and then down to 70 degrees. So you'd normally use 50 degrees when you're showering, 70 degrees when you're heating the water for dishes. And then this side, you've got one kilowatt off and then two kilowatts at the bottom. You can have the electric and gas on together should you be in desperate need of water. Obviously you'd use the gas if you're wild camping, but if you're in no rush, you could just use the electric as you've paid your site fees and you don't want to waste your gas. But like I said, you can have them on both together to double the source, which will reduce your heating time of the water. To operate your fridge, what you need to do is you need to turn on and off here. Once you've turned it on, you'll get the you'll be able to press this button and your main control panel will come on on this front of the fridge. A stands for automatic energy selection, so we've got a gas bottle on, but we're hooked up, so it's went to hook up, which is this hook up plug here. This indicates that the fridge is working on 240 volt, and what automatic does is it it will find the best source that you have available. So if I was to take the hook up out now, it would switch to gas. If I was to start the engine, it would switch over at the battery setting. So the battery isn't off your leisure battery, it's off a feed when the engine is only running. So the engine must be running to send a feed, and what that does is it keeps the, the temperature the same as when you departed. So if you want to site the night before and all your shopping's nice and cool, you, if it's on automatic, switch the engine on and it will switch over. Or if you wanted to manually switch the fridge from source to source, you just press the square button so you're on hookup. You're on battery and it's failed with the code 6 because the engine isn't running. Or it's on gas and it self ignites. But with the battery, what I'd advise is if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you're lucky enough to have a uh, hookup at your storage yard, a few days before you go away, hook the vehicle up. Not only does it allow the fridge to cool down, but it allows the batteries to charge. Make sure the fridge is cooling down, so switch it on. The night before you go away, put your shopping in. And then what you can do is allow your shopping to cool overnight. And then what, when you are ready to go, if it's on automatic, it'll switch over at the engine battery. Or put on a battery and it'll keep your shopping nice and fresh, no matter how long you travel. So automatic A. And then what you do is your temperature's here, so five bars being the coldest. And then this little setting here basically stops the rubber from sticking to the door when the fridge and freezer is on at full temperature. Once you've finished using the fridge for the season, if you do just clean it out. So if you give it a wipe out, and then what you want to do is not close the door because if you close the door on both it forms an airtight seal so underneath this one there's a little lever so a little toggle and underneath this one there's a little toggle as well and what you do is you just connect that into there and connect that one into here and then it allows air ventilation around the fridge doors now in the bathroom located at the back of the vehicle 
So you've got like, for your toilet to flush, blue button here flushes the toilet, like so. And then the grey lever, you slide that to the right, it opens the slide. So to use the toilet, I'd always advise you to flush first, which lubricates the blade, as the blade is not 100% watertight. So always flush first, open it, use the toilet, flush the toilet to clean up, and then close the blade, which will isolate the cassette. And it stops the cassette lid from getting any mess on as well if you do it that way, otherwise you will have to clean the cassette lid. On the back here, it will also indicate this side when the cassette is full and requires to be changed. You've got your heater duct from your diesel heating so this bathroom gets lovely and warm. Light for the toilet is in here so this is the most common question when you get asked is where's the switch in the toilet. It's located just underneath the sink. Toilet cabinet. Toilet holders. Got a little cover there on a shelving unit for more toiletries. Slide this along, opens the shelving unit and covers the window should you want the window open. And then we operate the windows, two little levers on here. So you push the buttons on the lever, push out. You've got to push it all the way out to bring it in. Slide screen, which you just pinch in the middle to be part and then pinch these two together and that's your blackout blind. Large wardrobe in the back. So you've got these bungee cords to stop things flying forward and keep everything secure. And then you do have some drawers there for all your clothing items and a hanging reel for your other clothing items. But always put the locks on these ones like so. And obviously they don't need a lock on there because they've got this on the door which stops them opening when you harsh break whereas this door is too far away for that to happen. Towel rail, you hatch into your garage and then this is your showering cubicle so always tie the shower screens back when traveling stop some clattering about and then you do have your skylight so you'd open that by like so and then you've got a lock on there so you can lock that in place fly screen and blackout blind and then you do have a hanging rail which is great if you've been caught in the rain or you've got any wet towels so you can put your wet towels on there but if you've been caught in the rain hang your wet clothes in here close this concertina door and put the heating on and they'll dry out in no time but you can also use them to use a shower head and wipe wash your clothes down wipe them down but when winter rising i'd always advise that you unscrew the shower head from the shower hose as you can see there it's got a loop in so any water would just coil in here and could potentially split split this pipe so what you need to do is take the shower head off lie the shower hose in the shower tray and open the shower tap leave all the taps within the vehicle open so the bathroom tap the shower tap and the kitchen tap the waste tap and the fresh tap and then open the boiler which you'll get onto in a minute you've got your duck board here so it bears the weight better in the shower but you can take that out and clean underneath Above the fridge you do have your slide out project 2000 TV bracket which you would push this chrome catch forward and slide out and then you can mount your telly to this plate and then that just clips in when you're travelling and then in this cupboard, cupboard the customer has fitted a TV aerial so this is an option that the customer has fitted so to operate your TV aerial you turn, push up and then use the little toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial to find a signal but the best bit of information I can give you a tip is to point your aerial in the same direction that your other caravans and motorhomes on the site are pointing in and then always make sure that it's pulled in and tightened up when you're travelling as you don't want the wind to rip the aerial off you've got a min and a max on here 
so if you need to boost the signal you can do and then opposite it they have also fitted a dual charging solar panel so you put your regulator here and then your meter which shows the level of power in each battery but you don't need to do anything with the solar panel it does its own thing should there be sufficient light so in the summer it's great in the winter it'll do the job but not as good as in the summer above you've got your your skylight so it's a windy one so you just wind this indicates when it's shut by the red little tab so you just wind it open the skylight up obviously make sure it's fully secure when traveling and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen located just underneath the long lounge seat behind the passenger seat if you lift this cover up just in here is your boiler so your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter it's very important that you allow the water out otherwise it could freeze in here and unfortunately the boiler isn't covered under warranty for frost damage so for frost damage it's your responsibility to drain the water down and so to do so what you need to do is you see this yellow lever here when it's lying down it's holding water lifted up and it will drain, and it'll drain all the water directly underneath the chassis leave it up during the time you have the vehicle standing with, and then when you come to reuse it obviously lie it down like so fill the vehicle with water close all the taps within the van obviously put the bung on underneath fill the vehicle with water and then put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water go to the hot side it'll cough split and what it's doing is it's drawing fresh from the tank just underneath there into here filling it up with 10 litres of water until it gets to pressure and then once one tap's done do them all and then it is primed for the season but when you when you dump in the water come in with no electric on so the pump doesn't kick in and just lift that up also in here you've got your charger so this is your charger unit you don't need to do anything with it it is just charging the battery when hooked up and then as this model has a smart lounge it's got two folding rear seats so what you do is fold this back and then pull up pull it up and that's the back of the seat with which has isofix fittings on you've got a seat belt there and then what you do is you'd use the base cushion off that seat and turn it round and then you'd use the backrest which was on against the wall and put it into there and obviously you can feed your belt through and then you've got a forward facing seat which is good enough for an adult to sit on as well as children you've got exactly the same the other side and then they just fold away when you arrive on site so to make the front lounge into a bed use a switch in the kitchen and you'll be able to drop the table down Drop the table down all the way. Like so. And then what you need to do is just push the table over slightly. Pull the support out and turn the tabletop over. You will then use your infill cushions. So you use the one without the leg, which would go flat to the cab like so. And then it just is a nice snug fit into there and then what you do is push the leg in on this one stand it up turn it over and then that one will just sit with the leg hanging over the table and there you do have the double bed below and then of course you do have your switch here to drop your main double bed down so you can do this if you're using it as a like a four berth you put the ladder on and it'd be like a top bunk but if it was just a two berth you wouldn't bother with these and you just use this bed and you'd pull it all the way down and that's it in its lowest position underneath you've got your ladder 
and you've got these little tethering points here these are for the nets so the nets connect to the frame and then connect to these should you have small children when you stop it higher up you can put the nets on to stop them rolling out of both sides and then you would just put the bed back up like so and then to work the switches in the kitchen so the bed switch and the table you've got to have the key in position and turned on so if you've got young children and you want to isolate it you can't just turn the key off the key must be in and turned on for the switches to work but should the beds be stuck down or stuck up and with no power um, i.e you've run out of power on your leisure battery or your hookup has died or you've got a power failure you can take this cover off and use the, hind the, the winding handle that comes in your pack and wind on the top of the motor to bring the beds up or down this now brings us on to the end of the video on the Chasson 640 this one in the the video is the SE but like I said they do come in three different spec levels so they come in an SE a titanium VIP which is on a Fiat automatic and a titanium premium which is on a Ford automatic but this one was the SE should you have any questions about the model or want more information feel free to contact Time Valley Motorhomes on 01207 272 travel 7 or you can email our sales department at sales at timevalleymotorhomes.co.uk